the way you pronounce Anasazi. It makes it real sassy, but Anasazi. I know it's a difficult word. I was fortunate to grow up on the Navajo Nation because as a young individual, about the age of 12, I was exposed to ceremonial and very ceremonial events and participated in. And after that, when I grew up, I came back to the Navajo Nation because I got a degree in archaeology. I loved it and I tested. So in this particular case, I was more into the form of Hojonje. In that capacity, they would talk about, they meaning my elders, who I remember and appreciate what they've taught me and they uh, guided me in different areas. But the most important thing that they talked about was a road is not a road. It is the life cycle of Hojonje. Hojonje is a manifestation of two forms, a physical form and a spiritual form, which I would like to touch on. In its physical form, we're looking at a physical being, which we still consider it as an entity, an entity that embodies the black pavement as being the abyss or the space. It's a vehicle in this particular case, or at times it would have a haze, cosmic haze as we would call it. And in that, it has sacred lines. In this particular case, what you're looking at is a road going to Monument Valley. In there, and all roads have white and yellow. For us as Navajos, those are sacred to us because before we travel, we always say our prayers, saying, give us the blessings that we would need. So in your journey, when you leave from your house, you need to take a look at that in terms of physical form of your journey of where you're going to and coming back. But when you get there, you find yourself finding things of experiences, new conversation, and also an artifact, what could be a pebble, a stone, a handkerchief, and that artifact embodies the actual living being that you have something to carry with. So in this particular physical form, it's associated with all these things of Hojonje, so in Hojonja is like a basket, our Navajo ceremonial basket. From the beginning of this spiral, it expands out. And as you note, I would like for you to note, on, within this particular basket, it connects with the heavens. It's just not so much on the earth, but also the heavens, the embodiment of the physical form that it's there. In this particular basket, you'll have six um, mountains, as we would call it. And on the outside are 12. This is what we call the 12 cycle of life. In order for those things to exist in the physical form, you have to be the what I call um, the primary individual as the seventh or the 13th to make those things happen. So in this particular um, event, these sacred lines, what embodies in that is from the heavens, but it comes back to the ground as Hojonje. And Hojonje has its manifestation that sometimes we forget of who we are and we don't pay attention consciously or subconsciously. But when it does, you become awakened. So I wanted to bring this out from the physical form, that when you take your journey, you're out there, and you take that journey to, from point A to point B and coming back to point A again with all these wonderful experiences. And in that realm, you have to be very careful because you want to make sure that your travel is safe so you look ahead 
and to see what may come arise or be aware of the unknown, such as automobile accidents, things of like that, things come in your path, but you become subjectly aware of those. So I wanted to bring on the physical form itself. So in the fall of um, the fall of the equinox of 1999, I, had a, I have a colleague by the name of John Stein, and he's my mentor, and he's probably the greatest gift to me as a Navajo and becoming an archaeologist because we talked about a lot of things that were important from the manifestation of the spiritual world because he understood the physical form, but he wanted to understand. So this particular um, geologic structure that you're seeing is called Huishcha. It is one of these sacred um, object or a figure in there that he wanted to know how does on the Navajo land, how does this geological function work? So we, we went out there on that particular fall equinox of 1999. So we're standing on this plateau or a mesa. Right below that is 491. In front of that is Newcomb High School. And we're standing and looking east. And at that time, uh, I called it spring, but it's actually fall. Um, the sun actually wrote as rose up as you were looking at it from left going up to that. And what was exciting was we had the fortune to have a fog roll in. And in that fog, the sun touched that geological from its shadow. And when it started rising on its shoulder to the very top, and please note that the shadow started extending from Huishcha. And it was really interesting. And he just stood there and said, um, what do I do now? I said, nothing, just appreciate it. This is what you were asking about. This can happen. Because at that very moment, this particular site is the Newcomb Great House. And it is a, an effigy of what we call our winter gods, Yebiche. And from that particular site that we were looking at and we were facing directly east, that's when that line of that shadow actually touched that sacred site. And it just gleamed. Everything was quiet. And he, he just stood there and going, OK, I feel like I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's overtaken. It's very powerful. And I, the reason why I bring this up is because it, it actually happened. And with, I took him to another site. This is the fall, the winter solstice of the same year. And you see the etching, right? Um, I guess it would be, what, my left side? Uh, that's what we call the pre-Columbian road, the Anasazi road. And those actually do exist. And they are ejected or con uh, created to, to the cosmos itself. So in that cosmos, and things do happen. So I told him, whatever you do, don't say anything. Appreciate it, because it is the time and the moment that you feel nothing, nothing exists. You, you feel like a mortal, a mere mortal. But the appreciation of it shining to you, as it did, that canal, I call it a road canal now, the sun actually came down that canal. It's like looking at the water going into a water irrigation canal. And he just froze, and he just said, oh, no. So I said, John, you're not supposed to anything, say anything. What was I not supposed to say? <laughs> uh huh? So those are things that are on the spiritual side that do exist out there. And this is also part of the road of life. 
that my elders have talked about when they say a road is not a road, but you have the physical matter and also the spiritual matter, and the spiritual matter is actually combined as one and all, and one can't do without the other. So in this particular case, this, as we call it, is Hojonje. Hojonje is the living being of the human element, the spatial element, the universal element that combines us and holds us. And when you journey out there, be safe and be careful, and may it bless you and keep you safe on your journey. Thank you.